You know, when Sega told us that Fearless was supposed to be the year of Shadow this year, I honestly thought they was just gonna, like, just do it for the sake of the movie, maybe give him a little something extra, but no. Like, they really gave him, like, everything. Like, they really treated my boy right, and it's, I'm glad to see it. I mean, we haven't seen this much glorified Shadow since... Since when? 06? Generations? Like, it's been a while since I've seen Shadow and Sega go hand-in-hand hand like this, and... And I I'm just really glad to see it. It's, it's, a, it's a nice change of pace. To promote the game, Sonic X Shadow Generations, one of my favorite games of all time, they added a bit of something extra. And they added an anime. Which is really surprising as well. Like, wait, is this Sonic X? No, this is not Sonic X. Look at the art style. It's amazing, gang. Eh? Like, you really think that four kids really came up with stuff like this? No, I know they didn't come up with stuff like this. Because they didn't do it. That was not an insult by any means. I love Sonic X. I remember when I first saw Dark Sonic for the first time. I remember how much Chris used to be a nuisance and how much I low-key didn't like him. But, now granted, he is a 12-year-old child. But you have to remember, back then, we was 5-year-old kids, so it's justified. Back then, I low-key didn't like him. Now, does that mean that everybody else should not like him? No, I think people should like him. But me, me personally, I don't really like him. You know what I'm saying? That's just a personal thing. Okay, that's all I have to say. But today's video, we're going to give my review of Sonic X Shadow Generations. Because I pretty much watched the whole thing. There was a reason why I didn't react to all of it. And that was because of this video. We're going to be doing a review of all the episodes. And give my personal thoughts of each one. And overall, give a good, you know, a good, a good opinion of mine. So without further ado... Roll the intro. Phew, made it in one piece. That was a little close. Now we're going to start with the first one. The first one's pretty simple. It's called Shadow and Maria. And basically the summary of this episode is basically giving a quick synopsis on Shadow's past. We see Maria running down this hallway and she tells us about this Aurora Borealis. Which is something that she always wanted to see. And she basically talks about how she wants to know things on Earth and stuff. And she starts to faint. And Shadow talks about, hey, your condition, your condition. You have a little condition. You need to stop, you know, hyperventilating. Stop getting a little too excited. She says that when she looks at the Aurora Borealis, it reminds her of her wanting to go to Earth and seeing what's it like. Now, Shadow says to Maria that he should be the key to curing Maria. Because as all Sonic fans know about Maria, she has a bit of an illness, or rather a disease. And, you know, Maria comforts Shadow saying that, hey, it's alright, you know what I'm saying? You, you, you're fine, right? She hugs her, comforts him, and it's just, the whole thing is just really, really sweet. Really, really cute. We can really see the, the kindness in Maria. Like in this scene here, like every single time that Shadow says something in the, in the little episodes, like, she, she always comforts him. I mean, we already know Maria was already a sweet girl, but, like, we can actually see her talk and interact with Shadow in, in this way. And it just really makes it more more sweeter than what it already is. But the explosion happens, and Shadow says to Maria that, I'm gonna go investigate, I'm gonna see what's going on. But we already know that this guy is the cause of it. Like, if you played Sonic Battle, you would know who he is. But anyway, moving on. Eventually, these two, they end up scrapping after Shadow comes and find him. And this is like my favorite scene out of the first episode. If you see my reaction, like in the description of like this part that I reacted to, like this was like one of my favorite parts. They was fighting, gang. They was like throwing some hands. Like whoever animated this, I'm telling y'all, this was, this was amazing. Like this was really, really good. Like props to everybody who storyboarded, who like made this animation. Make more of this, please. Anyway, Shadow's tripping out real hard because Gun is boarding the ship. And Shadow's like, hey man, it's too soon for y'all to be boarding this ship. This doesn't pair up to what actually happened. And this is this is crazy. Like he's tripping out hard. He over here seeing Gerald. He over here seeing Maria. And all of a sudden, like he wakes up and it's like this big old nightmare. Turns out it was like this big old nightmare. But like even though he had like this nightmare, this lucid, this lucid dream, I'm sorry, he he says something's up. And he just goes. Savage Squad, y'all gotta understand. In SA2, the moon exploded. And everything that happened in SA2 applies to this animation. The fact that they even decided to go this route is a humongous W. Like, 
I haven't seen Azuka or anybody in Sonic Team really do anything like this before. With this amazing animation and good start to the writing and everything else, I'm definitely going to have to give this animation so far, this episode so far rather, a good 9.5 out of 10. Maybe a 9.9 out of 10. I don't even know if that's a thing. But yeah, 9.9 out of 10. Just 1% away, gang. Like, that was really good. Really good. Re well done, Ian Flynn. Well done. But that couldn't compare. This episode, rather, couldn't compare to the act that is episode 2. Finding the way. So we opened the episode up with the commander from Sonic Adventure 2 as a kid saying, Keep that creep away from me. That disgusting, heartless monster. Bro was talking like Goku before he was Super Saiyan. But Maria didn't pay that no mind, obviously, because she's a sweet girl. Uh, basically, she wanted to see what was wrong with Shadow. And Shadow was like, hey, Maria, look, man. So, uh, this thing that I'm looking at, this larva, is what was used to create me by Professor Gerald. And this thing is pretty much all that I am. Since you know, he was made from that DNA. But Maria, she didn't want to hear none of it. And hugs him again like the sweetheart she is. And reassures him that even though you were made by that thing, you were given free will to do whatever you want. And you can still be a good person despite of what you have. Like she over here talking him down, giving him like morals. Like if Maria was alive, so much could have changed. But unfortunately, Gun had to gun him down. We already know how that worked out. But we need to move on. Move on to the fact that... Well, that was 50 years ago, and Shadow kept everything that Maria said to heart. At this point, we already know what his objective is, because eventually Team Dark appears after he takes care of these bots. He says to Rouge and the Team Dark gang that he needs to go to the Ark because he thinks something is wrong. And again, Rouge, Omega, my boys, my girls, the team is back. I was so happy when I get to see the goats again. You know what I'm saying? They're over here taking care of business. They're standing on business. But after they get done, though, Shadow was like, man, I need to hurry up and get to this arc. And Roos was like, hey, I can get you to the arc, but you have to promise to go to Sonic's birthday party. And at this point, I already know what Azuka and what kind of timing he was on. Because ain't no way he's connecting this animation to the OG Sonic Generations. That's P. Now, I always have to rate these episodes fairly. So, I'm not going to give it a 9.9. .9. I have to give it a 10 out of 10. <laughs> a 20 out of 10. <laughs> for that beautiful animation and the good character of all the characters that was presented before. What I'm saying is, is that I think it's a 20 out of 10 because they did the characters extremely well and true to their counterparts. You comparing the characterization between this one and the dialogues in Sonic Heroes... I think they did it a pretty good job. Two to their counterpart. But hold it. We're not finished yet. There's still one more episode left. And it's called To The Ark. This one is more heartfelt. And I think that both episodes was more of a stepping stone to this one episode here. Because it really just shows how far people have become. We're going to get to everything in a minute. But let's just break down this this final episode. So basically, Rouge breaks down Shadow's entire past and basically tells him that all that stuff that happened to you, don't let that get in the way of your mission, right? You got a job to do. So Shadow pretty much agrees with everything that Rouge was saying, saying that gun isn't his objective tonight. And freaking Omega, like in every episode, freaking Omega says, I call dibs. And it's just so Omega, like, bro, chill out, bro, you're gonna get your turn. Bro, he over here blasting, and man, look how cold this is, man. He catches the rocket and throws it back. He's over here evading rockets, like on some Despicable Me type beat. You is not Gru, Shadow, calm down. I know if Shadow was right here in front of me, he would be like, you're right, G Savage, I'm not Gru. I'm the ultimate life form. Bro just freaking destroyed him. He's destroying him, bro. He's gonna kill him. Bro, he's over here teleporting, using the Chaos Emeralds to slow down time. Like, what is that machine really going to do to Shadow other than just, I guess, A, waste his time, B, him deflecting his abilities, or C, just exploding everything around him? Because imagine if those rockets hit the wrong thing. 
That man's gonna be fired. I mean, think about it, Savage Squad. The gun commander in this episode literally said the destruction of thousands and millions of dollars with the gun assets. Somebody has to be a fault here. I don't know, y'all. I'm just trying to get y'all to think for a moment. Something's up with that. Somebody gonna get fired. But you see my boy Shadow walking stone cold towards that ship. That man has the mission, and he's gonna do it. He's going to that arc. He's going to that arc. But hey, something else is up too, because as soon as he tried to go to the arc, all these, I guess, emergency protocols get ready to fire at the ship. Like, why would you want to shoot down the ship? Ain't you gonna destroy another asset that y'all own? Like, come on now. Like, you gotta really think about this. Good thing Abe surely thought about it, because as soon as he touched that scanner, everything started to shut down. And look at my boy Abe. Hey, he grew up. A little too much, but he grew up. Yo, Roger Craig Smith, how many roles have you played for Sonic the Hedgehog by now? The Gun Commander is surely your next newest one. You did a good job. Well done. A Rouge was sitting out here being fake to gun. Now she wanted to be real to gun because she has the flash drive needed to reveal the time eater. Which I guess has something to do with the game counterpart of Sonic X Shadow Generation. Now that she got the flash drive, the commander wants to know, hey, if, if Shadow wanted to do all this, why didn't he ask? And then Roots was like, when did Shadow ever ask to do anything? He's Shadow. Well, you did also aid it in like a bunch of destruction of our, I don't know, weapons and rockets. You did destroy pretty much everything. But he went back to what Roots was saying and said, you know what, you're right. There's only one person who can stop Shadow from taking our stuff, and that would be Maria. The gun commander is actually pretty nice to Shadow when he grew up, so that's that's a bonus. We see Shadow over here thinking about Maria. This is so sad, man. Shadow, don't think about it too hard. My man's about to cry. Shadow, it's okay, man. It's okay. I'm here for you. We all here for you. We love you. Speaking of love... Do y'all love this new song? I haven't heard this song before. Hold on, let me let, let me play it for y'all. Bonus points. You get bonus points for this song, Sega. Very emotional, I think. Very emotional song. You get bonus points for this. Well done. So Shadow here, he's not doing so well. He looks like he's about to cry. Man, that man's going through it, but he, he levels himself. He says, no, that life was taken from me long ago. I have a mission, and I'm going to figure out what's going on in the Ark. And he goes off to the Ark. And I'm pretty sure the Ark is pretty much the first level of the newest game that I may or may not be playing on the J Savage channel. And... He just goes off there, and that pretty much concludes the whole thing. 10 out of 10. 10 out of 10. I love it. Anyway, uh, thank you guys so much for watching this video. I gave you guys my review, and it's time for me to go because, not gonna lie, I am a, a little bit tired, and I have to get started on the next video that I'll be dropping next week because, as you all know, I'm going to be dropping videos every single week in October until my birthday, which is on the 28th. So... I know that my uh, my next video is going to be uh, what was it uh, Apple Music versus Spotify. It's a sequel to a video that I did last year where I talked about who's better, Spotify or SoundCloud. And if you want to check that out, the link will be in the description. Be sure to comment the word carrot because I'm going to be doing that throughout the month. Be sure to comment the word carrot if you made it this far into the video. That way I know you're loyal. And um, you don't have to be loyal to watch this video, but I was just doing it for funsies. Comment the word carrot. And uh, yeah, like, comment, subscribe so you can be a part of the Savage Squad. Turn on the bell. And that's pretty much it.